Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. Welcome back. Today, I want to go over the new season of the Chosen Hunter Exotic Chess Piece, Omni Oculus, and buckle up. There's a lot to go over. You saw the title, the thumbnail. I wouldn't steer you wrong. This thing is crazy. It's buggy. It's all over the place. It has some special things, and just like in the backers review that I did, I'm not sure if it's a bug or some of it's working as intended. And you know what? I think some of it definitely could be a bug, but it all works out to something very good, very fun very strong. And there's also some things that I know that do work correctly. I have the numbers and it's a lot better than some of you think on the surface. I'm gonna show you some cool things you can do with it. And also I wanna remind you now and later on in the review that this chess piece has a lot to do with the void melee and grenade. And there's currently no artifact mods that involve those void abilities, but remember they come up, oppressive darkness, abyssal charge, and more. So even though there's none this season, that doesn't mean that this chess piece can't be used right now because it can. It can be used in PVE and PVP. So let's break it down. The exotic perk is beyond the veil. You gain a second smoke bomb charge and have damage resistance while invisible. When you make an ally invisible, they gain damage resistance while invisible and you gain melee energy. The chest piece is designed for Night Stalker. Now, out of the gate, two smoke bombs is a great thing. You combine that with the gambler's dodge, you can throw three straight smoke bombs. And before I get into the broken parts of the exotic, let's first talk about the damage resistance. Whenever you go invisible, the word resist goes up on your screen. If you make an ally invisible, it's going to say resist on their screen. This does work on all trees. On bottom tree, if you throw a smoke at your feet, you're going to go invisible, you're going to get the resist buff. Middle tree, land a crouching headshot, proc follows execution, you go invisible. Resist is going to be on the screen. On top tree, just simply dodge to go invisible, resist is going to go on your screen. In PvP, it's an 11% damage reduction. Only while invisible, you get that 11%. So this does tank three shots from something like a 140 RPM hand cannon. Those do 63 damage with the reduction. And also I noticed that it kind of disregards Thorn's burn damage for the most part. And this is just PvP, but it also goes into PvE as well. In PvE, it's, it's a way bigger number. But also important, this resist buff can go into team play in both the Crucible and in PvE. So the new stasis fragment, Whisper of Chains, you take reduced damage when you're a frozen target or a friendly stasis crystal. So the stasis user has to be within 15 meters of a stasis crystal, and when they're that close, they get a 32% damage reduction when near. So the True Prophecy hand cannon should do 90, but when they're next to the crystal, it does 68. Well, this stacks with Omni Oculus, so if the stasis user has an Omni Oculus teammate that's on bottom tree, they can throw down that grenade on them, make them invisible, and they get that on top. So 120 RPM hand cannon that used to do 90 damage goes all the way down to 61 with all that DR stacking. So the team play can happen, and even in PvE, and that's where you'll notice it way more. And from testing, that's that's a tough thing to test because while you're invisible, the PvE enemies just simply can't find you. So I used a Colossus that has the turret spam in the Nightfall. At 1300 power, 1300 Nightfall, it took 8 shots for the Colossus to down me from the turret. When I go invisible, get the resist buff, it took about 15 shots to take me out. Maybe 16, but definitely 15. So put it this way, when I had the resist buff on, the 8th shot that killed me before was the shot that just broke my shields with that resist buff up with Omni Oculus. Then while in red health, it took seven more shots. I also tanked my power to 50 below the recommended power level. At base, the Colossus took me out in three shots. With Omni Oculus, it took me out in five. So with little differences with power and with what the enemies can deal, it has to come from combatants, by the way. I estimate that overall in PvE, you get a roughly 40 to 50% damage reduction, which is really good. Hunter's always been the medic in higher level PvE. Whether you're top tree dodging to go invisible, whether you're throwing smoke bombs at your feet, or landing precision headshots with flawless execution for Spectral Blades Hunter. You can move around fairly freely, and while you're doing that, we all know that a lot of PvE enemies focus areas, especially on a res point, and you have to sit there and try to get them up. And just overall in team play, not to mention, if you're on bottom tree, it gives reload, it gives the heart of the pack buff. Maybe the stasis teammate throws down that glacier grenade, they have the chains fragment, then you throw the smoke bomb, there's a lot of damage resistance with that. So it could be really cool, but here's where it gets really weird and where the fun begins. And by the way, if your teammate's in a super and you smoke bomb them to make them invisible, they do not get the resist buff. But the perk states, when you make an ally invisible, they gain the resist buff. And you gain melee energy. Well, the only way to make an ally invisible is with bottom tree way of the pathfinder. It also goes hand in hand with heart of the pack for the increased mobility, recover, resistance, weapon haste, and that's things like reload. And then you have combat provision within the tree. So when you make an ally invisible, it's going to grant you grenade energy. So if you make two allies invisible, it's going to get you your grenade back pretty much. So it's kind of a loop. Another part of the tree, when you throw that grenade, deal damage with that grenade, it gives you melee energy back. So for the Omni Oculus perk to work, you can't be with them when you smoke bomb. If you're both together, you throw it straight down. Yes, everyone gets hard of the pack, but you don't get any melee energy back. You have to be far away. 
When the ally is far away, you smoke them at their feet. That's when you get roughly 50% of your melee back. It's pretty cool. That's a lot of melee energy. And remember, you have two charges. But this isn't the best way. For whatever reason, the game takes the act of an outside source granting invisibility, granting this melee ability buff. So check this out. On Middle Tree Spectral Blades, Flawless Execution, the Crouching Headshots, literally every crouching headshot that you land, you grant yourself invisibility, you get the resist buff, but it also gives you 50% of your melee back. So literally four kills while crouching gets both of your smoke bombs back. This makes Night Stalker a neutral game ability king. Because in PvE, remember, it also has the debuff Shattering Strike, so you're invisible, you have the resist buff to go in for the strike, you're taking near 50% less damage getting to your target, and when you melee them, you apply 30% debuff. And in PvP, if you're sniping or getting those crouching headshots, every time that you land one, 50% of your melee comes back. And you have double corrosive smokes with Spectra Blade, so you can double wombo combo, essentially. You can jump up in the air, throw the smoke, the grenade, the smoke again, and a side note for PvP, and PvE for that matter, since you do have a massive upkeep on your abilities, I'm gonna get into more of them. There's an artifact mod this season, Focusing Lens. Your light abilities do bonus damage to combatants affected by stasis. So if an enemy is slowed or frozen, and in the Crucible you're gonna see that a ton, your grenade and melee do 50% more damage to them. It actually does yellow crit numbers. Maybe you're running Battlegrounds and there's a stasis warlock, hunter, or titan. You're gonna have your smoke and your grenade a ton that you can be throwing onto those frozen or slowed targets. But moving on, top tree tether. Just literally dodge. When you dodge, you make yourself invisible, get the resist buff, and you get about 50% of your melee ability just by dodging. Not to mention, since you're dodging, you can run double outreach, or just regular outreach, and that gets you about 70% of that smoke bomb back. But it gets better. In all of these cases, like to me, and I'm no developer, it's, it's, it's coded as like, if an outside source grants invisibility, you yourself gain 50% melee damage. So like the whole time, the perk really is only supposed to work when you make an ally invisible. But like in the middle tree's case, Flawless Execution is being used as an ally for whatever reason, making you invisible. And then since you're invisible, you made something invisible, you gain melee energy. It's, it's really weird. The same thing with the top tree, but on top of all of that, Rat King also makes you invisible. The deal with Rat King, it gives you the resist buff, but if you pay attention, after you get a kill and reload, you get 50% of your melee energy back. So just like Flawless Execution, if you get four kills and reload in between each time, you can have both smoke bombs back. This does not stack with Flawless Execution though. I don't have the catalyst, but you would get health back when you reload as well. So when you put all of this together, it gets really crazy. There are so many smoke bombs when you're playing with Omni Oculus. In the Crucible, you, you're gonna have one literally in every single engagement. Most of the time, you're gonna have multiple smoke bombs to throw. It gets nuts. Now you don't have to run Rat King, but it does complete it. And it's been pretty cool to watch Thorn work with Necrotic Grip the toaster work with sunspots, and now Rat King working with Omni Oculus. But if you do run a Rat Pack, two or three of you running Rat King, well, let's say Bottom Tree, I have gone full minutes of having Heart of the Pack times three. And just playing with Top Tree, just dodge, go invisible, get a huge chunk of a melee, get a Rat King kill, that melee's back. Gambler's dodge, dodge next to an enemy, get the melee back. It's something that you must try, it's wild. And also with Top Tree, that's giving a lot of radar pings as well. I will get smoke bombs and just throw them to throw off radar, because I get so many. With how this is now, it's elite, it's crazy. Bottom Tree getting the grenade back, Rat King giving 50% back, Follow scanning 50% back, dodging with top tree, giving 50% of that melee back. It's wild. But really quick, I, I do think that this does make it viable for higher end PvE activities. I really do. And for the first time ever in Destiny 2, I would 100% run this over Orpheus Riggs, and that's wild to me. The damage resistance alone to get revives is huge, and having that resist buff to navigate to positions is great. And on top of all that, you have the smoke and grenade spam. I'm sold. And you kind of spec different things. For top tree, run high mobility, double outreach. Middle tree, make sure you're landing flawless execution. Bottom tree, have a lot of strength. Now in the crucible, honestly, all trees are super good, even bottom tree. But I know a lot of you will play spectra blades. And again, between the gambler's dodge, flawless execution headshots, you can corrosive smoke in every single engagement you get into. And I said it before, you don't have to use Rat King, but if you do, it does expedite everything. You can be invisible pretty much the entire game with bottom tree, smoking yourself. It's crazy. And like I said in the start, when the artifact starts to take into account void abilities, remember Omni Oculus, because the Night Stalker will be a top option for it. But right now, it kind of already is. You can do so much with it, and I plan to make builds if anything comes up, I'm gonna let you know. At the time of this video, the 1300 Lost Sector for a chess piece is available. Go get it. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff Gaming. You can use the link down below and my code COOL at checkout for a discount. Try using Omni Oculus these different ways. Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.